Today, we're going to be exploring an operating system that could be the Amiga's best chance for a future. It's free, open source, and runs on most standard PCs. We're going to check out the much misunderstood world of open source Amiga operating systems, Aros. And this video is sponsored by the wonderful Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your beautiful online presence. Now, back in my early days on YouTube, one of my first videos that got any real traction was called Why Use Amiga in 2009. And I followed that up with a 2011 video that went through the main ways of having an Amiga-like experience in the then modern day. As the current Amiga scene can be a complicated place for those who don't keep a close eye on it. And heck, even for those of us that do, it is still pretty messy, to be honest. Now, to really simplify things, today, you've got two main branches of Amiga, if you like. You've got the classic Amiga, which is the old Commodore machines running the Motorola 68K processor line. And also, anything that really runs the old Commodore Amiga operating system can be bundled in with classic as well. So that includes things like FPGA devices, like the Mini MiG and the Vampire. And the second type of Amiga-like systems is the next gen or the NG Amiga systems. And these generally came around after Commodore, the Amiga's parent company, went bust in 1994. And these are third-party attempts by members and companies in the Amiga community who've taken it upon themselves to create their own Amiga-inspired operating systems that run on more standard or more modern hardware. And to break it down even further, of these next generation operating systems, there are three main ones. Now we've got Amiga OS 4.1, which is made by a company called Hyperion. And this has been around since the early 2000s and runs mostly on custom PowerPC based motherboards. Now, as it turns out, this has been quite a big disadvantage for OS 4 since the demise of the PowerPC architecture on desktop computers. And that means today, the systems that it runs on are limited and quite low spec by today's standards. And being custom machines, they're quite expensive as well. With custom computers like the X5000 made for Amiga OS 4 that will cost you over 2,000 euros. And on the lower end of the scale for OS 4, you have the SAM boards, which will cost you around 700 euros, which although is more affordable, that still prices out most new users. And I've done videos on Amiga OS 4 before, but sadly, I don't run it anymore, and I haven't for several years, since the machine that I used died a few years back. And for the price, I've really struggled to justify buying a replacement, as, to be honest, the OS 4 scene just doesn't look all that active anymore. And it seems that there's only been one update made to the operating system since 2014. And the second next generation Amiga-like operating system is also PowerPC based, and this one is called MorphOS. And in many ways, MorphOS is quite similar to Amiga OS 4, although I do think it's got a more polished user interface and it's got a more active development community and release schedule over the last few years, with the current version 3.17 of MorphOS released only last month in May of 2022. And one advantage about MorphOS is that it can be run on old PowerPC Macs. So you don't have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on custom PowerPC modern machines. You can get a dumpster dive Mac G4 and have a comparable experience. But again, MorphOS is currently trapped in that PowerPC world, which really is a dead end in terms of getting new users interested. Now, MorphOS is making efforts to change architecture to AMD64, which should open things up a lot more, but currently, it's got many of the same problems that Amiga OS 4.1 has. And the third option has, bizarrely, often been the least talked about, but probably, thinking about it, the one that's got the best chance of a long-term future. And I'm certainly guilty of that in the past, having done lots of videos on Amiga OS 4 and MorphOS, but this is my first dedicated video on Aros. And Aros itself is somewhat complicated to get your head around. Now, development started back in 1995 when it was known as the Amiga Research Operating System. And the goal was to make an open source clone of the Amiga OS so development could be continued by the community as the machine no longer had a parent company. But today, to avoid any copyright problems, Aros is now a recursive name and stands for Aros Research Operating System. And you can think of it 
a bit like Linux. The core operating system has been ported to various different architectures, including ARM for Raspberry Pi, Motorola 68K for classic Amigas and FPGA-based devices. And there's a version for PowerPC and for standard PCs, there is a x86-64 version. And then, like Linux, there are several different distributions available as well. And Kitty is the official mascot of Aros, and she was designed by Amiga animation legend Eric Schwartz. And there are a couple of what appear to be quite regularly maintained distributions. The one we're going to be focusing on today is called Icarus Desktop. But there's also the Aros One distro, which I think I'll look at in a future video, as that one looks quite interesting too. But Icarus appears to be very fully featured and runs on standard PCs and includes a vast collection of third-party applications and drivers that should make it easy for new users to run. And I haven't tried Icarus for about a decade, but the latest version at the time of recording this video is version 2.3 that was released in December of 2020. So let's give this a try. Now, Icarus Desktop is completely free and it should work with most standard PC configurations. Now, to get running, we need to download the ISO image from the official website and then we can get to installing it on a PC. Now, it does seem that you will need a writable DVD and an optical drive. There is a USB pen version of the light distribution available, but it does say that this is experimental at the moment. So it probably wouldn't be fair to evaluate the OS from this experimental version. So I'll write it to a blank DVD, put that disc into a standard PC and get to installing. And Icarus Desktop actually boots from a live CD environment, so after selecting that from Grub, I was left looking at a black screen for around four minutes until the Workbench Desktop screen appeared, and it appears they're using the Amiga's fantastic Directory Opus 5 as the file manager, which was very nice to see. And my initial impressions are very good. We've got the 1080p screen mode that's been selected automatically. The keyboard and mouse are working fine. And that might sound trivial, but I have tried Aros distributions in the past where these things didn't work properly out of the box, but it all appears to work fine here. And the installer is left out on the workbench screen. So I can double click that, format the entire hard disk on this machine, give it a reboot. And a few minutes later, I can install Icarus to my PC's hard drive. And the installer itself was reasonably quick, taking around 15 minutes to copy all the files over. And then when it's done, we're ready to reboot and start exploring the open source world of next gen Amiga. Is Aros going to impress me as an Amiga fan for over 30 years? We'll put it to the test next. And really quickly, before we check that out, I just wanted to take a quick moment to give a big thank you to this video sponsor, my amazing friends at Squarespace. Now, I was really pleased when Squarespace reached out to sponsor my channel as I've used it as my personal website builder and host of choice for over a decade. And it is brilliant for someone like me who hasn't got any web design skills. In fact, using their powerful website builder and all of their gorgeous custom templates, it's all drag and drop. Squarespace makes it incredibly easy for anybody to get a great looking SEO optimized website that you can use for personal use or for your business. So if you love what I do, support my channel and check out Squarespace with a free trial by using my link squarespace.com slash danwood. You can set up your site completely free and then when you're ready to launch it, you'll get a massive 10% off your first purchase of a website or a custom domain and a massive thank you to Squarespace. All right, then, so time to check out Icarus Desktop, get it running from the hard disk and see how well it works and what's included. Now, I've done a native install here, but also you can try it out from the live CD environment or you can install it on a dual boot alongside another operating system like Windows or they do what's called a hosted install where you can actually run Icarus by launching it from Windows or Linux and even share some system resources that way. But for this video, we're going to be trying out a full local install. And on first boot, you actually see there is a little configuration wizard to customize a few settings before we launch, including the appearance. So we can use the default Icarus theme or make it look like the classic Amiga workbench, which is a pretty nice touch. We'll keep it on default for now, though. And we go through some localization options as well. Now, I'm in the UK, so we'll set it up for that. And uh, same with the keyboard layout, too. And you can then change your mouse pointer speed and double click options in here as well, but we'll leave those on default. 
And next, we're meant to be able to set up our screen mode. Now, it's correctly set itself to 1080p, as my monitor is, but for videos, I generally like recording in 720p, as it makes things a bit bigger on the screen and easier to see for people on phones and that kind of thing. And the next bit is for the audio device, which all looks fine. And then we can change the way that pop-up menus appear. Now, I will change this as I do like the option of having menus appear as pull-down menus from the top of the screen, like the classic Amiga OS does. So um, I'll put that option on. And we'll leave all this bit as default. And then it tells me there is an experimental video driver available for my system. So we'll give that a try. And again, it keeps bringing up that little requester telling me that I need to close the windows on the screen. And you'll see in the corner of this stock install, it is throwing up some errors here. So I click cancel, which is the only option I can do. And I'm just left with the DOS window. So at this point, I actually thought it had crashed, but I tried moving the DOS window and then saw that the desktop was hidden behind it. So manually closing it, I was in. And my screen mode is still 1080p. It did mention that the new graphics drivers will be used after reboot, so I rebooted the PC. Okay, so let's delve into what we've got here. And my first impressions are that unsurprisingly, it looks like an Amiga. And you've got a lot of the stuff that you'd expect to find on Amiga OS here on the Icarus desktop, including the RAM disk. Now, RAM disks are available for lots of different operating systems, but it's always been a standard component inside Amiga OS ever since the original releases back in the 80s. And actually, I think today having a RAM disk is even more useful than it was back in the 80s, because how many times on Windows or Linux or Mac OS do you download installers for programs and you forget about them and they end up clogging up your downloads directory. Well, using a RAM disk, you can download installers directly to here. And the good thing about a RAM disk is next time you reboot the system, it's only a temporary disk, so everything that's in there will get wiped. So it's a really good way to reduce clutter. And as you can see, we have a few things that the system automatically puts in there, like a temporary directory and a few environment settings. And uh, we have a little toolbar here at the top. But it's actually part of directory Opus, which is their file manager that I mentioned before. So, you know, we can never get around using that. We can go back in there. We can check out what's in that directory, which is nothing. So, yeah, just by clicking around, we can get into things here. And then looking around the window, we have a few gadgets on the edge, same as Amiga OS. We can click that one and that will close the window. This one here will minimize it to the desktop. We can do that on pretty much any window. And this one here is a zoom gadget, which will flip between two states of the window. And the one on the end is, is what's called a depth gadget. So if I open another window, you can see that we can then send any window back or front using the depth gadget. Now you can also set this up so you double click them to bring them to the front, but this is the traditional Amiga way of doing things. And also on the desktop, we've got our hard disk here, Aros. Now if I double click that, you'll see a selection of directories here, or folders as Amiga OS calls them, hence the reason they look like a filing cabinet. And again, we can play around with the view settings here. If I wanted um, that nice toolbar that we had in here in the RAM disk window, uh, but also I wanna see these icons, there are a few different ways that we can do that. So we can view as name, which will bring them up as a list here, or we can go to view as icon, just the icon, or icon action, which gives you the best of it all. It gives you a uh, the nice toolbar at the top here and the icon view too. And Amiga OS actually hides some of the user files, um, the system files away from the user rather. And we can see those hidden files by right clicking and going to view as show all. And in here, we'll see a few extra directories, including C, uh, which is where all of the system commands are hidden away. Stuff that maybe you wouldn't use day to day, but they're all in there. Uh, we have L, which is for file handlers. And also we have S as well. Um, this is quite an important directory to know about as it contains the startup sequence. And that's kind of like the Amiga's version of auto exec bat that you find on MS-DOS. So if I double click that, that will load in multi-view, the viewer there, and we can scroll through and see all the commands that the system is executing when we boot. And obviously you can uh, change these at your leisure. Although it is recommended that if you're gonna add anything to it, you do it in the user startup. So then you don't mess up the main one. So we'll hide the rest of those uh, icons for now. And the directory structure, very similar to the Amiga, actually. We've got the tools directory here with a lot of the programs that are familiar. 
um, from the Amiga. We've got system here where you can open a new command line. You know, we've got Amiga DOS in here, so we can uh, see all the commands. It works exactly like the Amiga. We can format disks from here too, which is very useful to have. Yeah, and actually, if you know your way around Amiga OS, this is going to be very familiar to you. So uh, no major surprises, but obviously they've uh, kind of recoded and improved on a lot of these as well. And you can change even more settings in the Preferences directory. Now, see if this looks a little bit messy. This might be a good time to uh, demonstrate this, actually. If I right-click here, we can go to Clean Up, and that will organize the icons. But as you can see, they're going off screen a little bit. We can resize this, and then if I wanted to remember those icons and the position of the window, we can right-click and go to Snapshot. Snapshot Lister would just remember the position and size of the window. Snapshot All will do that, and also all the icon positions as well. So if I click that and close that, and now if we open it again, it's exactly as we wanted it. And we can also change a bunch of the settings that we set up on that initial launch. If we did anything wrong, we can go in and change the, the key map and the language preferences. We can mess around with the screen mode here as well. We can change the system time in here. Uh, we've got network options as well, um, those menu options that we had on launch. So anything that you want to change, you can do pretty much all of it from the preferences directory, including, by the looks of it, the, um, the appearance as well, because I know that Aros does actually support theming. So this is quite interesting. There are a lot of the uh, themes pre-installed in Icarus Desktop. So you actually get a lot of preview of them up here as well. So if we wanted it to look like Amigo OS 4, we could make the windows look like that. We can make it look like Morph OS. Um, there's quite an interesting one down here as well. We can make it look like Mac OS 10 Lion, which I think might be quite interesting to see. So I think we'll save that. Uh, we do have to give the system a reboot, unfortunately, for the, uh, the theme to take effect, but we'll give that a quick try. I think it might be worth it. And now that it's rebooted, if I open a window, it kind of looks a little bit like Mac OS, uh, the older <laughs> Aero theme, although, some of the sizing looks a little bit off. So uh, yeah, that's uh, maybe not the best example to show. I think we'll put that back to default. That's better. And one final thing to mention on here is the dock down the bottom of the screen as well. Now, they've actually put some shortcuts to uh, programs that you might want to frequently use, like a text editor, for example. And also, if we click on the uh, Kitty Eye icon here, we have a start menu as well. Now, I remember back in the 90s when Windows 95 came out, there were a lot of these kind of start menu applications developed for the Amiga. I remember a lot of people got a bit angry at them, though, saying we shouldn't be copying things off Windows. But I think in this day and age, the start menu is so intuitive to everybody, isn't it? And, you know, it's, it's proven the test of time. You remember when Microsoft tried to kill it off in Windows 8, <laughs> how everyone wanted it back as well. So I think a start menu is a pretty standard GUI component and uh, really, you know, a good way for new users to find things rather than having to delve through directories. So in terms of look and feel, if you've used Amiga OS before, you're going to feel instantly at home using Aros and Icarus Desktop. It really does feel like, you know, it's a souped up version of Amiga OS. And I get that some people might think that the user interface looks a little bit dated. But for me, you know, someone who's always loved the way the Amiga looks, um, I think this looks fantastic. So let's check out a few of the included applications. Now, of course, a web browser is one of the most important tools that we run these days. And there is one bundled with Icarus Desktop called OWB. Now, I have used OWB before on Amiga OS 4 and Morph OS, and the version included here does appear to be quite a few years old now, with a copyright date of 2016 on it. But in terms of website surfing, it actually appears to work quite well on standard websites and forums. It appears to be quite responsive and fast loading for the most part. Although that completely changes if we try to go to media sites like YouTube. Now, YouTube always seems to be an issue for alternative operating systems, and Aros, unfortunately, is no different. Using OWB, the YouTube site wouldn't even load. And I tried accessing videos directly from Google, just browsing to it, but actually that brought OWB to its knees and even crashed it eventually. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any videos to play within OWB. Social media is another big thing in 2022, and social media sites were a bit hit and miss with Twitter refusing to even load, but Facebook displayed its mobile version, and that appears to work fine here. 
And Google Docs is something I use every day, and I've had success using it on MorphOS in the past, but sadly, it doesn't appear to work reliably in this version of OWB, with it loading any document as a blank file and then crashing the browser totally when I try to type. So browsing is a mixed bag, you know, for standard websites and forums, it's fine, but for a lot of what I do daily and more demanding stuff, it's not so good. And there are other networking-based tools included in Icarus Desktop, including one of my favorite IRC clients, the brilliant Wookie Chat, which works fantastically here. And for email, the old Amiga standards Simple Mail and Yam have been ported to Aros and are included here too. And there are hundreds of other applications included with Icarus Desktop. Now, there are so many on here. I'm not going to demo everything, but if you go into the extras directory, you'll see in here we've got a bunch of drawers all nicely split up by category. And inside these, there is heaps of pre-installed software all ready to go. For example, a few that I've picked out, we've got paint programs like Luna Paint, which is an open source paint and animation program, uh, a beta version of it, and the About window even claims that it's playing with bugs, but it appears to work quite well from my limited testing. Obviously, your mileage may vary. And the uh, interesting fact, this is actually written by Hogna Titlerstad of FriendOS fame today. And we've got Zoonfig, which is a vector drawing package based on the Unix program Xfig. And this looks very fully featured. Now, there are a bunch of examples included, so you can see the kind of results you get with Zoonfig. And of course, every operating system needs a Microsoft Paint clone, and uh, Icarus is no different with Zoon Paint being bundled in here. This one's very cool, Icon Editor, which allows you to make your own icons for programs. And it looks really good with a load of tools included. And Amiga icons have actually got two separate states and you can edit both of them in here. Now, this one I've got to say is a lot nicer than the Commodore one that they included with Amiga OS back in the day that I spent countless hours in and that got very poor results. But I do like the look of this. And of course, Tracker or Mod Music is a massive thing on the Amiga scene, and we've got several Tracker programs included here as well, including a port of the classic Pro Tracker. And my personal favorite, the amazing Milky Tracker, they're both bundled in the Icarus desktop. And of course, there's the usual selection of MP3 and Mod players and image viewers and media players. All of that's included here too. And this directory is very cool. A load of pre-installed games all set up ready to go, including a few simplistic games and some which are brilliant, although not really known for being Amiga titles back in the day. But they do appear to work really well on here. And there's even an Aros demo scene with a few examples pre-installed. We've got Lou, which is a simple spreadsheet program. Cinnamon Writer for word processing. And there are a few simple text editors included too, so perfect for editing things like your startup sequence. Although, from my testing, it appears that not everything works or is installed properly. Several programs I tried to check out appeared to be totally missing components and refusing to launch, or just hanging or not doing anything when I tried to load them. One that I wanted to show in this video is Audio Evolution, which is a powerful Amiga digital audio workstation. And I was really surprised and pleased to see that's included in Icarus Desktop. But unfortunately, after selecting my audio mode, it just didn't get any further. And for a bit of extra fun, there's also a directory full of emulators for other systems. So if you wanted to run your classic Atari 800 games or play around with Commodore 64 emulation, or even play an adventure game in ScumVM, they're all in here. Okay, and the final thing I want to show you is running classic Amiga applications inside Icarus Desktop. Now, this uses a very nice feature called AmiBridge, and it's very flexible as well. There are several ways of running classic Amiga 68K programs in a sandboxed environment. Now, if I click this little menu here, you'll see that we have a bunch of different options, and I can actually load the 68K version of Aros directly from here. So if I click it from the menu, it will load it into the um, UAE emulator. 
And uh, let's close this window here. We should be able to see, there we go, the um, classic 68K version of Aros is running here. Now I can actually just press um, the Windows key or the Amiga key, as it will be on the Amiga keyboard, um, N and M, and that will flip between my current Icarus desktop and the 68K Aros install. So let's try running a classic Amiga program in here. Now I've actually got a, um, a work partition from an Amiga with a bunch of classic Amiga apps in here. So if I open software, we can see there is an Amiga amp, and that was a, um, and still is actually still in development, an Amiga clone of Winamp pretty much. So I can double click the icon from here. Uh, it needs some setup, but there, as you can see, it has, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it has now uh, launched successfully, and I'm running a classic Amiga program on here. So I actually got two versions of it. That'd be why I complained. Now, if I um, if I go back as well, there should be some more programs that I can demo. So we have um, a web browser for the Amiga from back in the 90s called um, AWeb. So I should be able to double click that. And again, that will launch on this screen. There we go. We're now running a classic Amiga web browser. So. Cool that you can run it inside this environment, but if you've used anything like Amiga Forever before or UAE, not that impressive really, but it is nice to have that option. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to uh, my main Icarus desktop and uh, double click on this um, old school Amiga mouse icon here. And as you can see, this is the control for the Janus UAE emulator. So if I quit, that will completely quit the emulation suite. So that's gone now. One thing you can do if you've got Amiga Forever, the very comprehensive Amiga emulation suite, you can actually integrate that and it will copy all the Kickstart ROMs and actual Amiga OS from that. So then if I go to Amiga OS from the desktop here, again, it will load into the UAE environment. But this time we are running actual Amiga OS, which obviously is going to be even more compatible than the Aros 68K version. So, you know, we've got proper Amiga Workbench here. So I can double click that. As you can see, you know, all the programs and everything are in here. And uh, this is really a emulated Amiga environment. So everything that you would normally run on an Amiga is going to work just fine in here. So again, cool that we can do that. You know, we can flip between Icarus and the emulated Amiga Workbench. What is really cool, though, if we come out of this, I'm going to go back there and just quit the emulator. There we go, that's gone now. You can change the preset loader. So actually, rather than running on a full screen, we have a mode called integration. So if I click that, we enable that, save it. And now what we can do is we can launch, for example, Amiga OS again. And again, we've got that short wait while the emulated Amiga environment loads up. But this time, you will see a bit of a difference. Instead of opening on its own screen, it tells me on my Icarus desktop here that the 68K environment is ready and now we can run classic applications on this screen. Now you can actually configure it so that message doesn't appear, so it's a bit more transparent. But now if I click on continue and we'll find a uh, an old 68K program, there's a few actually on here, the same ones that I was showing you before. That's uh, a different way to access it. So we'll try um, again so you can kind of see how well it works. We'll run Amiga Amp and this time, You'll notice that it doesn't open on its own screen. Instead, we've got the Amiga version of Amiga AMP loaded on my Icarus desktop, and it looks pretty seamless. So we get this integrated mode where really you can run classic Amiga applications on your Icarus desktop. So I think that is really slick, actually, um, and definitely a lot nicer than having it running in its you know full environment on its own screen. So I do really like that. Let's try this one more to... Uh, Give you a demo as well. We'll open uh, AWeb, the, the web browser as well. And there you go. It's opened on here. And I can just resize that window. And you can see that it is running on the Icarus desktop. So that is a very nice way to run your classic Amiga games. And because it is a full virtualized classic Amiga, you can also run games and that kind of thing as well, no problem. So uh, yeah, very, very cool. 
So that's been a look at Icarus Desktop. I've got to say a very nice distribution of Aros that runs well on standard PCs. And I won't underplay what a big achievement that is. You know, creating an operating system that runs on a specific machine or a specification is a lot easier than making one that tries to support the huge variation of PC configs. And this worked very well in my testing over the last few days. Now, sure, it is still a bit rough around the edges in certain places. And despite the fact that Aros has been in development for like 27 years now, in many ways, it still does feel a bit like beta software. Almost there, but needs a bit of a final finish. What I do find really sad is that I always read on forums and in Facebook groups, people demanding that the Amiga OS should be made open source. And whatever your thoughts are on that, We've got it already. We've got Aros, which is pretty much exactly that. The only thing is, without being too brutal, nobody uses it. We've got this great foundation and a very small dedicated army of fans who are keeping it going and making things for it. And yeah, it hasn't got the finish or the polish of something like Morph OS or Amiga OS 4, but also it hasn't got the amount of applications or development as well, despite the lower barrier to entry and portability. And it is a bit bizarre, really, because, I mean, I've been guilty of that as well. But the thing is, Aros is free. It's open source. It runs on standard PCs, Raspberry Pis, FPGA devices, actual Amigas. And realistically, I think if there is to be a future for a modern Amiga-like operating system, it seems logical to me that this is where the Amiga community should be concentrating and pooling their efforts. Together, they could make something pretty special. Unfortunately, I've got a feeling that will probably never happen, but hopefully you've enjoyed this look at Icarus Desktop, and I will, of course, put the download links in the video description if you want to try it out for yourself. And just a quick reminder, if you enjoy my videos here on YouTube, I also do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast, The Retro Hour, with new episodes every Friday, and we bring you a very special guest on each week's show. You can get it from your favorite podcast app or ask your smart speaker to play The Retro Hour podcast or head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here's another couple of my videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.